Check, please. Welcome back to Everything Money. In this video, we're going to talk about Paul and his short on the QQQ. If you or your financial advisor has gotten you into some of these high-flying companies that have done very well the past couple of years, we're here to offer a word of caution in that these may very well be and have been the companies that are getting hit the hardest. So we're going to talk about a standard ETF and Paul short on the QQQ. Paul, give it to me right now. What's your, what's your play on this? Okay, January 5th. So last year, actually, I told Mo, man, I wish I'd shorted QQQ because it was getting so overvalued. And I was looking at the companies. Here are some of the holdings of QQQ, right? Apple's number one. Microsoft, overvalued. Amazon, overvalued. Google, overvalued. NVIDIA, overvalued. Tesla, overvalued. Google, overvalued. Facebook, buy. I own it. Overvalued. Not bad. I look at all these companies going, there's so much. And these top 10 companies account for, what is that? 40, 45, 50% of the value? Paulie, do you want to say? Yeah. With Facebook, yes, you own that. But why do you own that? I own it because of the value play. Because it pulled back 45%. Yeah. Uh, no, more than 45. Even nope, you're better. right. 45%. There you go. 45%. So... Now, what did I do? I used to have 24,000 shares of SPY shorted. I exited at $484 a share on January 5th. The same dollar value. How much is that? It's like 11 million bucks at that or something like that. The same dollar value got me 29,200 shares of QQQ. Jeez. The same total value. 24,000 shares multiplied by 44 was the same as 29,200 shares of QQQ. And I think I entered this at 369. Giggity. Was that what it was? Let's see. No, let's actually look at, I have it on my phone. I will just look it up right now. So correction, I exited SPY at 469 on January 5th. I entered QQQ at 384. Now keep in mind, guys, more shares of QQQ, but it equated to the same total value. QQQ right now. Let's look at it. Right now, QQQ is at 344. So 344, right? I have made $40 per share on this. Times 29,000 shares, call it 1.2 million bucks. Mm -hmm. SPY. SPY is currently at 437. So 437 I've made $32, so I've made less per share, and I have 24,000 shares. So it's like 740 grand. Yeah, 768. 768. So I have made an extra almost $450,000 by being in the QQQ versus the SPY. Now you might sit there and say, why is that? Well, guys, if you watch any of my videos, any of my videos, you'll see why. Oh, by the way, the dividend on QQQ is much lower than the dividend on SPY. So, I'm, so when you short, you're responsible for the dividend as well. So I'm also paying less per month in dividend costs because of QQQ's half percent dividend versus SPY's 1.2% dividend. Now, when I looked at those companies and I did the numbers, I believe, and this is off memory from January, I believe the price of free cash flow on the NASDAQ top 20 or 30 stocks was something like, 42, while the ones in the S&P's top 20 or 30 stocks was like 30. Guys, I've said in so many videos, when times are bad, the most overpriced companies will fall the most. And this will continue to happen. The most hyped and overpriced companies will fall the most when things turn. Because when you buy based on momentum, when momentum stops, what do you have? You have nothing else. But when you buy based on value, when the momentum stops, you still have cash flow. You still have good value. And eventually people will realize it and start buying those stocks again. Now, my stocks will still fall along with yours. But the goal is they fall less and some will actually go up because people will say, wait a second, I can buy this company for seven times free cash flow? I'll take it. Because it's better than buying this company for 150 times free cash flow. It's not working anymore. Mm -hmm. Even though it's falling to 75 times free cash flow or 50 or 40. And they, and they fall less and they rebound faster because they're fundamentally sound. Yep. If you go look at every back test in history over decades, value works best. Absolutely every single time by a long shot. If you don't believe me, go research it yourself. There are books written on this where they actually back test. The little book that beats the market is based on that. It's a value back test and it crushes the market over long periods of time. 
Now, does that mean it's always going to work? No, over three or five year period of time, it could suck as have mine for the last five years. Mm -hmm. But this is why I entered the QQQ short versus SPY. Because I was like, this is way more overvalued and these hype stocks got to be insane. Square used to be up there as one of the top uh, NASDAQ com companies and now it's not even anymore. Oh. Is it a NASDAQ company? Maybe it's not. Let's see. It's not four tickers, but I thought it was a um, NASDAQ company. This was the second biggest holding uh, of, of ARC. No, of my retired mother and her financial Square? planner. Yes. Square. Unfortunately. So let's look at our good friend, Ark. Yeah. Guys, the, the point of the video is we know you're not shorting the QQQ. Well, maybe you are, but you're not. Um, but it's these high flyers are going to be the ones that lead the market down, just like they've led the market up to levels we've never seen before. Yep. And that's, that's just the way it works, guys. Every, the, the bigger the high, the bigger the low. The bigger the irrational high, the bigger the irrational low. That's just the way it works. The pendulum swings. And when I'm teaching these things, when you're out there going, man, that makes sense. I want to be crazy? Look at getting drunk. You get drunk, you feel high, you feel great. The next day, how's your hangover? You feel horrible. It's no different. You're euphoric when you get married. You have a, you, you coast divorce, you feel awful. It's every, it's all these extremes. This is the way life is. That's why the best investors are the ones that are emotionally the most calm. You know, we started a day trade. Day trading was new to me. And I would hit refresh every second, literally seeing it. And I realized, Paul, you're doing the same thing you say not to do. Yeah. So from now on, enter your trade, follow the rules, ignore the profit. But then today I was like getting excited because I was up a lot, blah, blah, blah. And I wanted to go to lunch. So I just exited all my positions for a profit. But it's no different, guys. If these value investing concepts speak to you, you can join the Everything Money community. You can get the software behind Paul and you can have all this in the palm of your hands. By joining the community, you'll be joining thousands of people all over the world who speak and communicate just like you on these topics. We help each other, we work together, we day trade, it's incredible. You get the software, you get the data, and all the amazing tools that are coming out in the future. Go to everythingmoney.com or patreon.com slash everythingmoney and join today. The QQQ is massively overpriced still, and I'm going to ride it down. I'm absolutely going to write it down to, well, look at look at NASDAQ back in 2000. It hit a high of 5,100, 5,300, something like that. It got as low as like 1,100 1, 1, 1, on the NASDAQ. It fell, I think, 83% total. Maybe it was 5,500. The bottom line is it fell 83%. The most overpriced index fell. S&P, S&P didn't even fall half, I don't think. For the viewers at home, Paul, uh, one of the more, more popular questions we get in our Everything Money chat, people who are connecting with us is, well, I've lost a bunch on companies I maybe didn't even know why I was in. And if the gloomier times are ahead with a war, inflation, do I get out? Do I stay in? You know, I, 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 I believe in a process. And if you bought because of hype, that is not a process. I get it. I was there too. 20 years ago, I bought more on hype. And not as much as most people, but I still bought on hype. I had companies go to zero. Global Crossing, I bought and went to zero. Because a friend of mine said, I've made a killing on Global Cross, you got to buy it. A friend, sorry, my sister's friend's dad. And I believed him. I'm like, I bought Global Crossing. Yeah. Watch it go to zero. Okay. That's the way it works. You learn from those things. Yeah. Learn a process here. Yeah. Join us. Join our community of investors. Look at this chat right here. There are over 6,000 people in this chat talking every day about their investment ideas. It's a great way for the emotional side to be calm. Okay, I've got people around me who make sense. We're talking to each other. Markets are down. What do we do? Our investments are down. I am down 35% on Facebook and 30%, 35% on Alibaba. I'm not sweating it. Because I know I bought a cash flowing business. That I think the market is mispricing right now. In fact, I wish the market would shut down for five years. So I don't have to look at the stock price for five years. Because yeah. I think in five years, both those companies are making a lot more money. And people will realize that and say, okay, let's go give them the valuation they deserve. Losing on stocks that you don't know what, why you bought them can be the best thing that ever happened to you. Yeah. You, if you, you learn a if lesson. you learn from it. If you learn from it, it's going to be one of the best things that ever happens to you. If you don't learn from it, well, that sucks. Sorry. <laughs> Not to go back into it. We did a video the other day about luck. Yes. Seth got fired from his chemistry job. If it wasn't for that a day, that was probably one of the worst days of his life. He wouldn't be sitting here today making a ton more money just off this channel and have a successful um, wedding Sorry, business. business. Yeah. But he was sitting there because of something he learned. He got something better came out of it. You will get something better to come out of it. If you, if you don't understand the hype and it frustrates you, maybe you're open to the ideas of value investing. And if not, learn a process for day trading. 
Learn a process for trading with Mo. It's fine, but learn a process. I encourage you to follow a process. Processes work. That's why you see me. I'm a day trader. I'm a long-term trader. I'm a value investor. I do options because I understand those processes. Most people are one of those four. I'm all four. Oh, I have real estate and I have businesses too. I understand the process. I don't believe in you f- that. I, I believe investing is investing. And I've figured out six ways to make money in investing because I found the processes that work that speak to me. Paul, if I was a 57 year old, almost retiree, we get this question in our chats as well. Go learn options and day trading. Ah, It's a great way to in- make income for retirement. It's a great way to make, I mean, I, we day trade for an hour a day. Pretty much. And, and right today, I made 0.3%. Doesn't sound like a lot, but do me a favor. 0.3% doesn't sound like a lot. And it's not right? risky either. There are 52 weeks out of the year. There are five trading days in each. 260. Call it 250 with holidays. 250 days out of the year. If I make 0.3% each time, what is that? 75% of my money. Let's say I suck. And half the time, I break even. I still make 37.5% of my money. Working for one hour a day. And it works. It works if you follow the process. Every single person we see fail didn't follow the process. That's yeah, it. Yeah, really a robotic process. Robotic of, process. Of, of unemotional. And we do these videos. We don't go live. We're, we're, if you're part of our Bid and Ask Nation with Mo, you can come on the live stream with us and trade with us. We have 80 people on the thing. We go, what are we looking at? We look at the stock. Somebody will put something out. I look it up. I go, no, no, no. Oh, here's one. Today I had nine short positions at once. So I have my SM, I have my QQQ short going big. I have my 13 stocks I own long. I'm day trading. I have options. Everything's working. I mean, I just sit back, relax, and enjoy my flight. That's what I do. Now, does that mean I'm always up? No. The other day, last week, I had a day where I started up 200000 I ended down 300000 That's a $500,000 swing. Mm-hmm. But I'm okay with that because to me, I understand the process. I understand. And guess what? You understand your process. You know your process in other ways in life. Just apply it to investing. That's our take. Subscribe, fondle the thumbs up, and come to us. We, we're offering a lifeline to be a better investor moving forward. Maybe you have many years ahead like me. Paul reminds me, I have many years ahead, and I'm eager to uh, keep practicing, fail faster, and I get, get good at all these, all these things. So see you next video. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.